Whenever we hear of violence in our communities, we always hear about holdups and shootouts, but have we ever considered that gentrification was a form of violence against our communities? Despite a fire that threatened to stop the event, the Safe Outside System Collective gathered a number of concerned LGBTQ community members and allies in Brooklyn to talk about the violent effect gentrification, homophobic violence, and even police brutality have on our communities. So today we're doing a summit on gentrification and space violence by the SOS Collective out of the Audrey Lord Project. And the event today is looking at how the impacts of gentrification um, really increased policing and also the types of violence that LGBTST, GNC, people of color face. Throughout the day, the participants were able to openly express themselves at workshops on safety strategies, panels on gentrification and police brutality, and even a community dinner. Queer and trans youth of color are, there's a large percentage of them as community here in Brooklyn. Um, I also think it's an urban myth that there are not families, LGBTQ, two-spirit, mm. uh, people of mm -hmm. color, families raising queer and trans youth. Um, parents who are who identify as queer and trans people of color. So oftentimes when we think about the emphasis of youth of color, sometimes it's this whole other realm of community that doesn't get included inside of that in terms of looking at violence, transphobia, homophobia. Um, how are we looking at the broad spectrum of what, which kinds of youth are here, what kind of political uh, financial, spiritual, physical well-being are all youth looking for. That includes our families, no matter what gender or sexual identity that we have. There are lots of ways to improve the community, and there are lots of needs still within bed -Stuy. So how do we separate gentrification from kind of like community development? Um, the idea that people want their stores to improve, um, people want to see more diverse businesses. People want to have the same amenities sometimes that they would have in a more um, in a higher income neighborhood, um, but may not be want to be able to pay their rent still. May want to be able to afford to to, uh, to buy a home. So, what is your sense of like? Is there a difference? What's the difference? And if you have any sense on strategy, I think there is a true difference in gentrification. I think gentrification is about the movement of people. I think development is about how we want to shape our space. I think gentrification is a beast unto itself, and it happens because people are pushed from other places, and we start to see, see the stunning of the tide. Developers of condos and luxury housing discovered the areas. Many whites who years ago would have never set foot in the area began to flock to it. The question is why? The answer, I believe, is expensive real estate prices and rents in places like Manhattan, Long Island, Park Slope, and Brooklyn Heights. Every time someone gets displaced from the neighborhood, mm -hmm. the neighborhood loses a resource. And I don't know if um, we've always seen that through an anti-violence lens. So what that means is that we work with businesses and small organizations to uh, train them up in intervening and preventing homophobic and transphobic violence. So, you know, we recruit them, we build a relationship, we follow up and we do a lot of trainings with them around uh, being in charge of their space, right, and of shifting violence. So every time we lose a business, it's not just that, you know, the neighborhood is losing a bodega, it's that we're losing an ally who's been doing really empowering work um, to make the neighborhood safer and is invested in the neighborhood, you know? And then of course, the people who might move in may or may not care about what homophobic and transphobic violence looks like, or may or may not care about maintaining the culture of the neighborhood. So I think events like this are important because it's important for us to see each other um, as like important uh, activists and actors in maintaining a safe and healthy neighborhood. It's important to have events like this because it's about getting to know one another and building together. Um, and safety is number one priority always. Being that I have been subjected to various uh, mechanisms of gentrification in Manhattan, um, I wanted to take a step to being a responsible uh, neighbor in my neighborhood.
The Safe Outside the System Collective uh, began doing work in central Brooklyn in 2005, and before that we were doing citywide work around police violence against LGBT people of color in New York. And so since 2005, we've been really focusing on addressing a lot of the hate and police violence that LGBT people of color experience in the neighborhood. Um, and just really trying to build up a community infrastructure so that community members can intervene in violence without relying on the cops. Because a lot of times what we see is that when our folks call the cops because they're experiencing violence, a lot of times the cops don't show up. Sometimes they show up and make the situation worse. Sometimes the survivor gets arrested. Um, and just really trying to create a community culture where homophobic and transphobic hate violence um, aren't accepted. For more information on the Safe Outside the System Collective and the Audrey Lord Project, visit their website and like them on Facebook.